Hello and welcome to the web tutorial on web design. I am Sabir Haq and I'll be training you on Adobe Muse. This is the second lecture and in this lecture I'll be taking you through creating headers using master pages. I am right now working on my own website. I'm going to be using my website's example in handing out this particular training series. Let's have a look into my homepage which I have made in Photoshop so far. So I have with me my website's homepage. This is what I have designed. If you were to find out how wide is my page according to the number of pixels, and then if I count from here, the entire page width is around 1300. Now, it need not be this precise as what you're going to do in Muse, but you should have an overall idea. For example, this is my header, and my header is around 65 to 66 pixels. And this is going to be my hero slideshow. There's going to be some text. And if you scroll down, you'll have a snapshot of all the important pages from my website. This is my footer and these are all my social media links. I have to now recreate this on Muse. For this lecture, I'll show you how to create this header. Now, if you watch closely, let me zoom in for you. If you watch closely, this is actually a repeating background. Now, I have actually made a block of this image and we're going to be repeating it on our website. How are we going to do it? I'm going to show you just in a while. The idea is that you don't have to get this entire image and use it as a header. By the way, in my website, irrespective of what size the page is displayed in, the header, this particular pattern will run across from edge of the page, from one end of the page to another end of the page. All right. So if typically I view this on a browser, I will have areas here as well. Okay, areas on the left, areas on the right, and my website is, will be the center. But my header is going to be running across. So it will go beyond the page size of my website. That's the whole idea. So which means I do not know what kind of display screen a user would be using to look at my website. But irrespective of that, this background should be repeated across whatever size it is viewed on, even smaller or bigger. That's the whole idea. So let me go to Muse and let me show you how this can be done. All right. This is the overall site structure of my, of my website I have shown to you in the first tutorial itself. This is my homepage. This is where my website is going to be going. And now I'm concerned about this part, the header. Now, if you look closely here, there are certain rulers here which can be moved and which cannot be moved. This ruler right here, okay, I, it is grayed out. I cannot use it because this is only power available in the master pages. Now, if you're familiar with in, Adobe InDesign, you would know whatever you create master pages, it would be reflected back into all your pages. I have two master pages. They are not defined any longer so far. I will double click on A master. It opens right here and you can see all the Rulers now are active. What happens if I move them? By the way, this ruler right here is going to decide how much area you're giving it to your header. Now I mentioned in my Photoshop uh, site design, it's around 68. So I'm going to keep it to 68 as well. So 68 is the size I'm allocating for my header. This right here is going to adjust the padding. This right here is going to add the padding between the top part of your website and the browser area okay now to give you an illustration of this i can show you if i actually create a rectangle which is the rectangle now please be very careful about this when i'm creating a rectangle from a header can you see when it is touching the edges of the page okay this is the page this is where my actual size of my page is by the way okay if i'm extending it and extending towards the end of the entire display which means no matter how wide my website is viewed in the header will run from edge to edge let me show you how i'll put a fill here I'll, just for illustration purpose i'll put i'll use any color right now all right this is any color okay and if i preview my website right now you can see that this entire thing okay from edge to edge you will get my header all right let me go back to design now let me show you this if i increase this and if I have a browser fill, I can actually define a browser fill in my website. I have to just click out 
and you will say browser fill and I can use a browser fill say for example something which is very clear a gray color okay this is the browser fill so since I don't have any element in my page right now it's also filling it with the browser fill as well so if I go to preview this is what I get padding between your header and you know so you understand now if I go back and I close this I don't go to get it anymore this is always going to be at the very top let me remove the browser fill okay so it's white right now it's going to be white now since I've explained what a browser fill is and also what a header how it how it works similarly it works like this also this is going to be the size of your footer okay this is the bottom of your browser and this is the bottom of the page because if you increase the length of your page they both are going to go together right it's supposed to go together right the page of the length is increasing the length of the page is increasing they both are together this however will also change ideally it should change because if i specify spe if i specify a height for my footer it should remain so now i haven't thought about the height of the footer so far we'll come to it when we, when we get to it but right now we're concerned about the header all right now i told you that i want to repeat a particular pattern across the header how do i do that well if i click on this box this rectangle which runs from edge to edge i'm going to be i was using this particular yeah this particular menu to look at the color i will not do that i will actually click on this point here it expands with the options it's giving me an option to also add a gradient so in fact as far as the plain flat color is concerned i can also add a gradient but i want to add an image i'll go to image it will open up my folder i'm going to use this folder it's a very small image as you can see 77 by 78 pixels it has a basic outlay of the entire pattern it's a very small file it's, it's only 4 kb rather than inserting a 20 30 kb as the header i am now using only 4 kb because this i want to repeat i click on it it says fitting and if you can see it it does fit it's only giving me one so instead of fitting options like this i will use tile and it's going to repeat across all the pages so that's it if i now preview my website you can see this pattern is repeating across the entire page and that's what i'm talking about this is a very clever use of repeating background and it loads in your website only once which is only 4 kb and repeat across whenever you want to create a header if you don't want to use a if you don't want to use say for example a gradient or a flat color you can always bring in an interesting pattern and repeat it across and you don't have to get the entire image this will run from your this will run across the page the top corner and here that is how you create a header and since i added this header right here it is repeated across all the pages any page i open my header is right here so as far as my design is concerned but i will add after this i will just add this text now this menus is going to be self-generated later that i will show you when i talk about menu but you can add this text you can just go to muse you can use a type tool and you can type and create a box and you can place your text here you can use your fonts the way you like and this by the way is your page width this 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 line starting right here is your page width all the elements in your website is going to be placed within this two lines you can always change the number of columns you want i've used the default 12 column but that's your choice in the next tutorial i'm going to show you how you can create this hero slideshow to give an idea let me show you what my slideshow entails i'll go to my layer panel so here is my layer panel and you can see this slideshow i will show you different options of it this is one option this is another option there's a third option and there's a fourth option so this four slideshows are going to be running one after another on my muse i'll have buttons here which you can click and that will change to the next slideshow the whole idea is that this is going to be a searchable item which means whatever text i'm going to put here it's not like an image it's it's an image in the background but text here is actual text so which means that it can become searchable if i want it to be that's how i'm going to create a hero slideshow in the next tutorial so see you next in my third tutorial for adobe muse thank you